Good morning. My name is David Hatch from Process Safety Integrity, and I'm pleased to have this opportunity to share with you my Process Safety Index concept, which is an objective, consistent method for evaluating the balance between hazards and controls. So the Process Safety Index uses recognisable process industry concepts and principles to consistently evaluate the balance between hazards and controls. What dangers or concerns do we have and how do we assure ourselves that we are managing and monitoring those hazards? And it allows duty holders to establish if there is adequate protection in place and they are able to compare their performance or their index, not only within the organisation, but across the industry without revealing sensitive corporate, commercial or technical information. So the starting point is the chemicals that are processed and at this stage we're focusing on chemicals, although, uh, as I'll mention later on, there will be some concerns about high energy equipment. And this was inspired by the original Dow Fire and Explosion Index, and it uses the NFPA 704 Fire Diamond to score the materials according to their health, flammability, instability, and any special hazards or concerns such as reaction with water or um, any asphyxiation potentials. Not only do we consider the materials that are being handled, but also the conditions under which they are processed or transported or stored. And simply on the basis that the more extreme the conditions that the chemicals or materials are used within, then the more likely and the more severe the outcomes. If you're operating at higher pressure or higher temperature, then there's more stress or challenge on the containment and if the containment is breached the release could be more widespread. So we consider four aspects of the conditions, the pressure and that may include vacuum operation for example, the temperature which may also include cryogenic or sub-zero operation the inventory, um, the mass or the, the volume, and make reference to any regulatory thresholds, whether it's an upper tier or a lower tier amount. And then the exposure, what exposure does the process or plant present to personnel on site, to the neighbouring public and how vulnerable is the process of plant to impact from vehicles, road vehicles, rail vehicles or um, environmental conditions, floods, lightning strikes etc and any adjacent plants or processes. The other side of the balance to counteract the chemicals and the conditions are the controls or the protection measures and this is split into two parts the leading controls and this list is taken from api 754 the tier 4 process safety events there are a number of tier 4 conditions or criteria I, I've selected what I think are the, the most appropriate. So we have 
process knowledge management. And many of these you'll recognize tie in with process safety management frameworks. So we have management of process knowledge, documents, information, data, etc. Hazard identification and risk analysis. Are we conducting PHAs, for example? Operating procedures, safe working practices, asset integrity and reliability, safety critical elements, which could be safety instrumented systems. They could be pressure relief devices, for example. Training and performance assurance. What does the competency look like on the facility? Management of change, operational readiness and conduct of operations, emergency management or preparedness, incident recording investigations, and finally, the continuous improvement, measurement, management, auditing, and review. So these elements make up the leading component of the controls. Then the lagging components, again from API 754, three different tiers. We are obviously concerned with loss of primary containment. So the top tier, tier one with significant consequences, tier two with lesser consequences, and tier three challenges to safety systems. In tier three, we may not actually have had the loss of containment, but we've had a loss of control or some kind of excursion, which is putting a demand or a challenge on our safety systems, which may be the last line of defence and may indicate that a loss of containment is imminent. So in simple terms, the scoring is adding up the contribution that the chemicals and the conditions make to give us a hazard score. And then on the other side of the balance, adding up the leading and lagging components of the controls. And the process safety index is quite simply subtracting the hazard contribution from the controls. So if our controls are greater than the hazard, we have a positive result. But if the hazard is greater than the control, we have a negative result. So at this point, I've just got simple um, values here. So from the hazards, the chemicals, the conditions or the properties in the process ranging from zero to four for both of these. And on the right hand side of the scale, the control leading and lagging, they're scored um, from zero to two. So a score of four, the higher score on the hazard side is, is more um, concerning because the chemicals are more dangerous and the conditions are more extreme. A higher score on the control side is more positive. It's more reassurance that we are actually protecting ourselves against the hazard. So subtracting the control from the hazard will give us a number somewhere between minus 32 in the worst case to plus 32 on the best case. And crudely, we could equate that to the familiar um, US Air Force DEFCON system, the Defense Condition uh, Warning System. So at one end, we have DEFCON 1, where it suggests that an event is imminent, all the way through to the more positive DEFCON 4, um, we can obviously never relax, but it may suggest that an event is unlikely. A note about calibration. Obviously, there are numerous chemicals or materials that are actually non-hazardous or inert. Water is an obvious one, but water at extreme conditions, pressure and temperature such as um, superheated steam, can present significant um, hazards. We may also have equipment that are not necessarily wholly chemicals or, or materials. So gas turbines, compressors, these can actually shed um, mechanical parts with devastating effects. That hasn't been considered 
yet in the index, but it's something for future consideration. The chemical scores, uh, the NFPA diamond, they're readily available, for example, from the Cameo Chemicals database. And the other scores, predominantly the uh, leading and lagging scores on the control side, I've suggested some potential rankings and that's all available in the paper if you'd like to have a look and I look forward to any comments on that. So some things to bear in mind. Um, pressure, temperature and venture thresholds, they may be um, published for example, inventory thresholds, depending on OSHA or Cervezo guidelines, if you're in the US or Europe. Um, certain materials may have specific exposure limits um, that have to be adhered to. And then on the leading side, um, having um, some compliance measures, um, some simple thresholds here, based on a one third, two thirds breakdown and lagging components or lagging process safety events using a um, scale of five years. How many tier one, tier two have we had in five years? How many tier three demands have we had in five years? I think at this point, whether it's five years or 10 years, perhaps doesn't matter as long as everybody uses the same uh, metrics, so we are comparing apples with apples in this case. So it could be used a number of different ways. It could be used to aggregate from an individual process unit up to a plant, many plants on a site, many sites in a region, many regions in a business to get an overall sense of the performance, the balance within the business. It could be used as a management dashboard and with some thresholds that indicate or suggest some action is imminent. Ideally, if we could hook it into process management systems or maintenance management systems, so you've got a, a current representation or an evergreen representation of, of the index ideally have some neutral host that can be shared across the industry and so there's no fear of compromising your knowledge or your data or your um, sensitive information and in simple terms we could look at it like stock prices commercial companies make predictions about future stock performance um, perhaps we're able to make predictions about future protection or control performance. Um, in terms of visualizing this on a, a high level dashboard, if we take, for example, the Appendix B from OSHA PSM, this example here, this block diagram representation, we could simply color code that according to the index. So the red units or red major assets are concerning, the green ones are less concerning. Red is a, a negative index, green is a positive index, so you have an immediate sense of where your concerns are. And also uh, following up the um, stock or share price analogy, if you assume that you're protection is degrading at a fixed rate um, it's possible that you can anticipate so many months so many weeks into the future at some point you're going to cross a threshold where your index goes from positive to negative and you've got to take some action before the balance swings too far in favor of the hazards and less towards the controls so in simple terms, the conclusion is it's similar to risk. 
um, where our hazard is a measure of the consequences and the controls is a measure of the, the likelihood. So the more extreme the hazard, the greater the consequences, the more robust the controls, the less of the likelihood. Try and have a consistent approach so it's objective rather than subjective. It could be used for conventional risk assessments. So if you're conducting PHAs, um, you could use the mathematics and the index to determine the potential consequences. Or in a, a bow tie evaluation, when you're determining the severity for the consequences on the right hand side. It allows comparison inside and outside the business, so you can compare your index or your performance with your peers and your competitors. Allows you to focus on the weaker protection measures. What is it that's not contributing to the balance that's not weighing up more heavily on the right hand side? And with a certain amount of confidence, can you predict weeks or months into the future when your protection degradation is going to take your index below zero and therefore your hazards outweigh your controls? Well, thank you very much for watching. I'm happy to take any questions that you have.